Museums are a great way to visit the past, but if that past is all sorts creepy, it's actually quite the opposite. From haunted museums of the notorious Lizzie Borden to a museum bell tower that closed off due to too many ghostly presences, here are your top 10 haunted museums you don't want to get close to. I'm your host Andrew, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get right into this. At a number 10 spot, we have the Lizzie Borden House. Lizzie Borden has been a household name for nearly 130 years. For those who have no idea who this person is, Lizzie Borden was accused and acquitted for killing her father and stepmother with a hatchet in 1892, and the case still remains a mystery to this day. One unique aspect of the Lizzie Borden story is that you can now stay in the very home where the murders took place. Wow, how fun. The Lizzie Borden House, located in Fall River, Massachusetts, has converted into a quirky and charming bed and breakfast slash museum. And some people believe that the ghost of Lizzie, her father, and stepmother still haunt the property to this day. The CEO of US Ghost Adventures, which now owns the Lizzie Borden House, says that the guests have experienced strange occurrences, such as limbs or ears being pulled, and the sights of ghostly figures moving about the rooms. There has been the reports of a woman in a nightgown being seen in the Andrew and Abby suite as well, believed to be the ghost of Abby Borden herself. Even the staff of the bed and breakfast have eerie experiences on their own, with doors moving on their own and a shadow figure seen moving in the basement. The new owner even reported feeling a presence in the room he was staying in, which surrounded him, touched his leg, and pulled on the comforter that was over him. If you decide to stay at the house, there are even original artifacts on display, including books owned by Lizzie Borden and floorboards stained with Andrew Borden's blood. So definitely a great place to visit if you're just into this crazy murder stuff. At a number 9 spot, we have the New Orleans Pharmacy Museum. The New Orleans Pharmacy Museum, located at 514 Chartres Street, showcases medical contraptions and equipment that date back to the 18th and 19th centuries. But what many visitors don't know is that the museum is said to be haunted as well. One of these ghosts is said to be Dr. Joseph Dupas, which is a man who lived in the building after buying it from the Dufilo family in 1855. According to local legend, Dr. Dupas is known for performing shocking experiments on pregnant slaves and and it is said that he conducted voodoo rites on the property. His ghost is said to haunt the pharmacy museum after it closes, and his spirit is said to be responsible for throwing books, moving items on display, and triggering the alarm system even in the dead of night. Some paranormal teams have claimed that pregnant women are susceptible to empathic physical reactions in the presence of this evil entity. Two children have also been reported to haunt the museum as well. According to a story told by a museum employee, two children have been seen inside the building and in the courtyard behind the building. Interestingly enough, two of the Duffalo children, Delphine and Jules, died during the time the Duffalo family lived inside of this building. Could this explain the presence of these ghostly children? I think so. Number 8. The Haunting of the Bell Tower The San Francisco Art Institute is known for its rich history and artistic excellence, but there's one spot on its campus that many tend to avoid, and that is the Bell Tower. With its gothic style architecture and eerie aura, the tower is rumored to be haunted by the spirits of its past. The first supernatural occurrence was reported in the 1940s when a student working as a night watchman heard footsteps coming from the stairs, but upon opening the door, found no one there but bloodstained walls. The ghostly activity continued for decades with occasional reports of strange noises, destroyed equipment, and falling objects. Then the school started renovations in the 1960s, but the ghostly presence only grew stronger, causing the construction workers to actually quit the original job and the rentals to take much longer than expected. The school has since closed off the tower, but they have allowed psychics to perform seances on the site from time to time. One psychic claimed to have seen a graveyard at the base of the tower, which is said to have been built following the 1906 earthquake. But this didn't strike that much fear because in 2017, the school embraced the creepy factor by hosting an exhibition inspired by the hauntings titled The Ghost of the Tower. So if they are not afraid, why don't they just open up the tower again? Number 7, the Morris Jumo Mansion. The Morris Jumo Mansion, located in Manhattan, is a mid 18th century federal style home that serves as a museum as well. It is said to be haunted by Elizabeth Jumo, the widow of Aaron Burr, and one of the richest women in New York City at the time of her death in 1865. Elizabeth Jumo was a woman of many contradictions. Born as the daughter of a sex worker, she rose to the top and became one of the richest women in New York City. She was a keen collector of art, but also on the other side of this, she also faced 
faced many rumors of murder and suspicious deaths surrounding her various husbands. Then after her passing, her ghost was said to still linger in this home, with people describing it as too stubborn to leave. In the past, the museum has hosted a Yenka Shana Bear exhibition that included a headless figure meant to evoke Jamil's ghost. Meanwhile, the museum has also hosted numerous open paranormal investigations. Number six, the Palmyra Historical Museum. Number six, the Palmyra Historical Museum. As the name suggests, this museum is located in the city of Palmyra, New York. This historical museum is thought to be over 200 years old and once served as a tavern and a hotel. It is now open to the public as a museum, but there's a reason why this one is on the list. The story goes that six days before Christmas 1964, a fire raged a small home which had Ruth Anna Breeden, her husband Paul, and six children inside. It was a supposed flash fire which engulfed the entire house quickly. The husband managed to escape, but the mother and her six children were found burnt in the basement underneath a mattress. Although the fire didn't happen in the museum per se, it sits on the home's foundation, meaning the basement is in the same place. This is why the guests claimed to catch the scent of ash in the basement because this is where the woman and her children lost their life. In the museum, guests also report toys being flown off the shelves and even feeling their hair and clothes being tucked on. Now the museum has been visited by many paranormal investigators due to the activity within including ghost finders, ghost detectives, and various other paranormal groups. In the hump of our list, we have the War and Occult Museum. As we already talked about on our channel already, including a full top 10 about the horrific items inside this museum and go check that out if you haven't. We have the Warren Occult Museum. This museum is located in Monroe, Connecticut and it was founded by world famous paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. Its purpose is dedicated to preserving and displaying artifacts related to the supernatural and occult and unfortunately it has been closed down to the public since 2019. As we see in the films, this place has objects ranging from cursed witch voodoo stuff to innocent looking toys with murderous histories. Right Rightfully so, the Warren Occult Museum is known for its association with its own hauntings. For example, at many different times, the guests and even the Warrens believed it was haunted by the ghosts of the objects it contains, no matter how much preparation was made to prevent it from happening. Other visitors claim that the museum is actually haunted by the ghost of Ed Warren himself who passed away. The legend says that the ghost of Ed Warren can be seen in the museum and that his presence can be felt by those who enter. Other notable objects in this museum include Annabelle the doll, the devil made me do it dinosaur toy, the shadow doll, and real human remains. So yeah, lovely place to visit if you're into the supernatural and really cursed objects that have a small chance to kill you. Number four, the Tool Slang Genocide Museum. In the 1970s, this former high school was converted into the notorious S21 prison by the Kamar regime, where an estimated 20,000 prisoners were executed. The souls of the victims who were detained, starved, tortured, and then executed are said to still be roaming the S21 hall. Many unusual incidents have been reported there, including the guards who hear footsteps and chains rattling at night. Today, the school or prison has been transformed into a museum where the ghosts of the deceased are still said to haunt the halls. Of the 20,000 prisoners that experienced the horror of S21, only approximately 6 to 12 are rumored to have survived the genocide. It is said now that the museum employees even leave food out for the ghosts during their lunch breaks. They say that if you don't leave an offering, they cannot enjoy their own lunches in peace due to the loud noises and other ghostly activities that will occur after disrupting this. Number 3. The Wyoming Frontier Prison The state of Wyoming saw its fair share of bloodshed and violence during the gold rush, when ruthless prospectors would do anything to stake their claims to riches. It was only a matter of time before the law caught up with these malicious offenders and put them behind bars. The Wyoming Frontier Prison in Rawlings, formerly the Wyoming State Penitentiary, is one of the most haunted places in the state. Operating from 1901 to 1981, the prison housed over 13,500 inmates with an estimated 200 deaths within its walls. The the prison is now open for tours and visitors report experiencing eerie encounters from being touched on the shoulder or back to hearing voices, footsteps, and even cell doors opening and closing. One of the most notorious inmates at the Wyoming Frontier Prison was Andrew Pixley, who was sentenced to death for the brutal murder of a circuit court judge's child. Pixley went on to earn the title the longest to die by gas chamber, laughing throughout his seven minute execution, which just sounds crazy and terrible at the same time. Today, 
today, visitors report candles going out in Pixley Cell, and then suddenly relighting during ghostly tours. And on top of all this scary stuff, there's another resident of the prison, which is said to be Annie Bruce, the first woman ever convicted of murder in Wyoming. At just 14 years old, Annie poisoned her father with rat poison in a pie, killing him after three bites. Despite her heinous crime, she was released from prison at 18, went on to marry and start a family, but people who visit this place say that her spirit remains in this place. Number 2, The Mob Museum At a time, Las Vegas was controlled by the mob and some believe they still do. So it's no surprise a museum of mob activity was built to recognize some of the horrific acts they committed. All of their exploits are documented at the mob museum, renovated from the same downtown courthouse where many of these characters were prosecuted. The mob museum in Las Vegas is a fascinating attraction for those interested in organized crime. The museum houses personal artifacts, memorabilia, and old pictures of notorious mobsters and lawmen who once lived and operated in the city. With many mobsters being tried and convicted in the same courthouse, it's no surprise that the building is said to be haunted by the spirits of convicted criminals. Visitors to the museum have reported feeling a very negative energy, especially in the brick wall from St. Valentine's Day Massacre and the barber chair where Albert Anastasia was murdered. It is said that the unhappy, unconvinced convicted mobsters and their underlings who heard their fate in the courthouse still linger in this building, as do witnesses who had to testify against them but were eventually killed. Some do believe that the spirits of the mob's countless victims come to the museum to relive their memories. Number 1. The Old Operating Theater Located in the garret of St. Thomas's Church, Southwark in London, on the original site of St. Thomas's Hospital, the Old Operating Theater is a museum of surgical history and one of the oldest surviving operating theaters to this day. It was specifically designed to allow for ample light and to accommodate up to 100 students who wanted to observe surgeries and learn from the skillful surgeons. The patients who were operated on in this theater were mainly women from poor backgrounds. Despite the painfully and potentially deadly nature of the surgeries, they were still sought after due to the high cost of medical treatment at the time. Today, the old operating theater serves as a restored museum and is a popular attraction due to its dark and gruesome history. The museum has been the source of many ghost stories, with some claiming to have seen the apparition of an elderly lady in black who is said to be crying and wailing inside these walls. Another ghostly woman known as the Woman in White has been spotted roaming the halls inside of the museum. In addition to the ghostly sightings, there's also been strange occurrences within the museum, such as a sudden noise from the Herb Garrett and all the cabinet doors and drawers opening on their own, which left one staff member frightened and running out of the museum the first day they were at the job. Well, these are the top 10 haunted museums you don't want to get close to. What do you guys think about this list? Leave a comment down below of what you guys thought. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video for some more scary content. I'm your host Andrew and I hope you guys have a scary day.